If you're looking to buy a monitor with a high refresh rate, be it 144Hz or 240Hz, then you must have noticed how most of these monitors come with one of these two features, FreeSync and G-Sync. But what are these technologies all about? How are they different from one another? And most importantly, is one better than the other? If these are the types of questions that have been bugging you, then you've come to the right place. Over the course of this video, we'll be answering all of these questions and more, starting with what exactly exactly are FreeSync and G-Sync. So without any further ado, let's begin. FreeSync and G-Sync are what's known as adaptive sync technologies. They serve as alternatives to the V-Sync option that you can find in graphics menus of many video games. Now, if you aren't sure what V-Sync does, here's a quick rundown. It all has to do with the monitor. A monitor's refresh rate, which is measured in Hertz, determines how many frames the monitor can display each second. In theory, this acts as a hard cap on your FPS, since even though your GPU may be able to render 80 FPS in a certain game, a 60 Hertz monitor can only flip through 60 of those frames every second. This disbalance, however, is usually not as amicable as we've just described it. In this example, the GPU is actively pushing for those 80 frames to be displayed on a monitor, even though the monitor physically can't handle that. The result of this dysfunctional relationship is what we call screen tearing. This right here? Yeah, nobody wants this. And that is where VSync comes in. The purpose of VSync is to actually impose a hard cap on your FPS so that you don't have to suffer through screen tearing while you game. And this works perfectly well on 60Hz monitors. If your GPU can manage a stable 60fps, then that's what you'll have. If not, it'll reduce the cap to 30fps. Unfortunately, the situation isn't that simple with higher frame rates and refresh rates. Common issues with VSync include stuttering and input lag, neither of which are desirable if you've already gone out of your way to buy a 144Hz or a 240Hz monitor. So NVIDIA and AMD both decided to make their own adaptive sync technologies. NVIDIA made G-Sync and AMD made FreeSync. Now there are certainly some key differences between these two technologies and we'll get to them in a bit, but in essence, they accomplish the same thing. Whereas V-Sync throttles your GPU so that it stays in line with the monitor's refresh rate, Adaptive Sync adapts the refresh rate to the FPS. Let's say for example that your GPU can run a certain game while maintaining a steady 70 to 90 FPS. V-Sync would cap that to only 60 FPS. But adaptive sync technologies would make sure that the monitor refreshes at 70 to 90 Hz as the FPS fluctuates. So you can think of it kind of as a dance, with the GPU and the monitor as partners. When they're dancing to V-Sync, the monitor takes the lead. But when the band starts playing adaptive sync, the GPU takes the lead, which ensures better performance. Now that we know what these two adaptive sync technologies have in common, let's take a look and see what makes each of them unique. For starters, both FreeSync and G-Sync are limited by the selection of GPUs. As a rule, the FreeSync and FreeSync monitors can only work if you're using an AMD GPU, and G-Sync is only viable when paired with an NVIDIA GPU. Certain G-Sync compatible FreeSync monitors have been released recently, so there are exceptions to this rule, but they are still very much just that, the few exceptions. Next up, in order for either of these technologies to work, monitors have to use scalar modules. Needless to say, AMD and NVIDIA have different approaches to how these scalar modules are implemented. NVIDIA requires OEMs to use their proprietary scalers when making G-Sync monitors. This is why G-Sync monitors end up being much more expensive than their FreeSync counterparts. OEMs have to both license the technology and buy the expensive scalar modules directly from NVIDIA. Alternatively, AMD takes a more open approach. OEMs are free to use whichever scalar modules they want and they don't even have to pay AMD for licenses to implement FreeSync in their monitors. This is why FreeSync monitors are so much more affordable. But while having access to FreeSync monitors for cheap is without a doubt a good thing, this approach is not without its flaws. Most notably, FreeSync monitors only support a specific frame rate range. What this means is that some FreeSync monitors will only work in a frame rate range between, say, 40 and 75 FPS. 
while others may work in the 30 to 144 FPS range, and so on and so forth. This is a direct result of AMD's decision not to impose strict quality control, as Nvidia does. So when buying a FreeSync monitor, always make sure to check the frame rate range specified by the manufacturer. We've left a link in the description to a list of all the FreeSync monitors with their ranges, so that should help out. On the other hand, because Nvidia forces OEMs to use their proprietary scalar modules, G-Sync monitors have no frame rate restrictions whatsoever. In fact, this strict quality control ensures other side benefits as well, such as motion blur reduction, elimination of ghosting, and easier monitor overclocking. So when we add everything up and pit G-Sync and FreeSync against each other, what does the math tell us? Which of these adaptive sync technologies is better? Well, G-Sync is definitely the superior technology from an objective standpoint. But the objective standpoint is not always the one you'll be using. It doesn't mean squat if you're working on a budget, in which case FreeSync is the better of the two. So the most important thing to keep in mind is that in either case, you get what you paid for it. If you have the money to buy a G-Sync monitor, you'll appreciate it for all of its extra benefits. But if not, a FreeSync monitor will still save you a lot of headaches, just so long as you get one that caters to your desired frame rate range. And that about does it for this video. We hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can help us out by liking it and then subscribing to our channel. And if you've got friends who could benefit from watching this video, help them out by sharing it with them. If you want to see more videos like this one, make sure to click on the bell icon to get notified when they get uploaded so that you can be the first one to see them. Also, if there are any terms we've used in this video that we didn't thoroughly explain, chances are there's already a video about them on our channel. So we suggest checking those videos out. In the meantime, may your games be fun and your losses few. And as always, we'll see you next time on Gaming Scan.